Right, I think we are live. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Let me know in the chat that you can see me slash hear me so that I know that I've got everything set up right. I am still... Bearing in mind, I stream every night. I don't usually stream here in this way on these accounts. So I'm always a little bit worried that I've done something wrong and nobody can see or hear me. Right, we've got Reese on TikTok confirming I'm live there. And we've got one and zeros on YouTube confirming we're live there. Everything is working correctly. All is all is as it should be. Wonderful stuff. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Are we all... It's been a week since we last did this. Can you believe an entire week since you last got to see my beautiful face? Oh, it's, what, what am I talking about? It's It's been such a busy day. Oh, my word. What are we talking about tonight? Um, Basically, similar to what we did last week, if you weren't in last week's stream or didn't see the replay, um, this is basically an exercise in getting enough streaming hours done on TikTok so they give me full-time access to being able to stream on TikTok. I had to do two 25-minute plus streams in a two-week period. This is the second one of those streams. So we're going at least 25 minutes. Um, I'm dual streaming onto YouTube as well because that's where the majority of you are. Um, so want to make sure that the people who want to find me can find me as well. So similar to what we did last week, we'll have a little bit of a chat. Um, largely led by you lot. Um, so if you've got any burning questions or things that you want to talk about, feel free to let me know down in the chat use the chat to ask your questions we'll probably rotate back and forth between tiktok and youtube for questions like we did last week so everyone gets a fair crack at it and i suspect we'll also talk about the fact that i think me and anna are on the verge of starting a new youtube channel if you've been following along on tiktok this week you'll have seen that our joint obsession with lego is growing and growing and growing and uh I think we need I think we need to make a channel on it because we can't just keep flooding the other channels. I, I'm I'm wary of going down the same path that I went on the old vlog channel and watering down the core content on the channel too much by including the other stuff as well. But at the same time, my the way my brain works, when I'm passionate about something and I'm really into something, I really want to talk about it and make content about it. So I think the best way to um keep the the travel channel pure is to start a new channel where we can talk about our Lego stuff, do toy hunts, uh, do Lego building stuff and all that kind of thing. So I think that's the plan. I'm kind of gauging interest in it over on TikTok to see how people are feeling about that kind of content. But we did a like a two minute long video where we just had a tour around the Lego store today and it's already had close to 100,000 views on TikTok. So I think it's fair to say there's an appetite for the content. So I think we're going to be starting that new channel very, very soon. It's the first time ever, bearing in mind me and Anna have been together... I think it's 12 years this year maybe 12 or 13 years. a long time like more than half of my adult life we've never had other oh has obs disconnected we might have lost the youtube stream did we lose the youtube stream or did it stay on i had a message saying obs had disconnected but looking at youtube it looks like we're fine so i'm gonna pretend that didn't happen um let me know in the YouTube chat if we disconnected there. I don't think we did. I think we're fine. That was weird. I got a big message saying OBS had disconnected, um, but it looks like we're still okay. So I think we're still okay. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Me and Anna have never really had a shared passion, but obviously we're both into video games. We're both into like superhero movies, nerdy stuff. We have lots of shared interests, but we both have very obsessive personalities and our obsessions have never collided in the way they've collided on the lego so we've um yeah we we spent a lot of money in the lego store today that's the second time in a week we've spent a lot of money in a lego store we've also had deliveries most days this week i literally have a wall of lego this side of my office it's just off camera but we got loads of the animal crossing stuff today um we got i mean i'm not going to show you everything we got That'll be for the new channel, but we got we got some stuff. <laughs> uh, so I think we are going to be doing a new channel soon. So if you've got suggestions for what we could call such a channel, please feel free to share them because pretty much the only reason it doesn't already exist is that we can't think of a good thing to name it. I'm thinking of resurrecting the old never too old name 
that was what the original vlog channel started as if you were if you're really really old school and you've been around since the beginning of time what is now the vlog archive channel before it was a vlog channel before it was a daily vlog it was a channel called never too old which was basically me doing nerdy collecting stuff and toy hunts it wasn't lego specific um but it was just general toys nerdy things collections comic books action figures um we did toys r us toy hunts and all sorts of stuff like that's how long ago it was um so i'm tempted to just resurrect that name i think that's the best one we've got so far but if anyone's got any better suggestions let me know um two guidelines when it comes to suggesting names one we can't use the word lego in the title because if it does take off and become a big deal and we want to like become lego brand ambassadors anything along those lines we can't actually use the word lego so we have to steer clear of the word lego um, and also i don't necessarily want to use lelujo um, because that's the football manager brand and i don't want it to just be kevin chapman because that's the the vlog brand and plus it's not my channel this will be very much me and anna we were talking about it on twitch last night and i suspect it will be more anna than me a lot of the time um but it will definitely be a a joint enterprise so we need a name that kind of represents it's the two of us it's about nerdy stuff it will probably be a new home for things like convention blogs um so it won't just be it won't just be um lego it'll be lego and wider collecting stuff obviously you know i'm really into pokemon um you know i'm really into the action figures and that kind of thing so i think convention blogs would fit quite well there as well because i've already said they're not going on this channel this year because i don't think they fit with the travel content so lots happening suggestions always welcome let's see what's going on in the chat obviously we've got two chats going um so i do uh bear with me if i don't get around to your question someone's asking am i still deleting my youtube channel i have never and never will deleted a youtube channel so i don't know what makes you think i've ever deleted or considered deleting a youtube channel that has never happened um and never would happen that would be bonkers um have we got any travel adventures planned yes so two weeks from now we will be uh we will be in rome so we go to rome in just under two weeks then when we get back from rome we pretty much immediately go to edinburgh um so we've got those two trips coming up this month and then we're back for a few weeks and then we're off to lanzarote and then we're back for a month or so and then we've got the the chapman family reunion at center parks then we're back for a month or so and then we're off to disneyland paris so we've got lots of stuff booked for the next four or five months so lots of there'll be there will be plenty to give us weekly content on the travel channel on the vlog channel um so anything we do on a separate channel um similar to how the football manager stuff doesn't in doesn't overlap that channel won't really overlap either other than the fact obviously we'll go looking for a lego store in rome we'll go looking for a lego store in edinburgh and maybe make some content while we're there so that's uh it's all fun we're very very excited um right let's see what's going on in the youtube chat because those those bits were both from tiktok um am i going to watch posh in the playoffs well if we get into the playoffs which we should do yes i am going to be going to wembley for the uh the big the biggest final in world football the uh the bristol street motors trophy final and um, tickets were supposed to go on sale for that today um but then they didn't go on sale because they haven't actually decided on the kickoff time or they had announced a kickoff time. Loads of posh fans booked their trains and were going to buy their tickets today. And then at nine o'clock this morning, the club announced, actually, we're not putting these tickets on sale yet because they might be changing the kickoff time, which was handy for everyone who's already booked their trains. Thankfully, I hadn't already booked my train. But yeah, kickoff time might be moving, which will be uh, which will be problematic. Um, yeah, you can't fire tofu over here, I'm afraid. That means nothing to the people who aren't regulars on Twitch um right i'm just scanning through um a bit like never too old this will be yeah the re the rebirth of never too old lego is an expensive hobby i know and i am a i'm a sucker for an expensive hobby as well obviously pokemon cards not so cheap either and the, the big problem if you've seen the um the haul from the lego store today and this has been every time pretty much we've gone out buying lego more of it's for Anna than for me i'm usually the problem this is costing us like double what a normal 
expensive hobby would cost. We actually, when we were wandering around the Lego store today, we both picked up the new Stitch set and uh, had to have a little discussion about not buying two because that would be mental, but then deciding which one of us will get to build it, which obviously Anna is going to get to build that. And I'm very upset because it does look awesome. Um, right, let's try and actually pick out some questions. Um, I'm looking, I'm scanning through the, uh, scanning through the TikTok chat. Yeah, I need all the Animal Crossing, uh, all the Animal Crossing sets as well. They didn't have them all in the Lego store. They had the three cheaper ones, but they didn't have the two more expensive ones. So I've, I went to go and order them on the website. They're already sold out on the website as well. So I've, the, I ended up finding them in stock on very so if you are trying to get the Animal Crossing sets and they are out of stock because they were selling quick in the Lego store as well. So if you're struggling to find them, as of like four o'clock today, they were all in stock on Very. So if you're looking for them, Very is your place. Um, Centre Parks, why not Forest Holidays? Yeah, I think you uh, think you know why not Forest Holidays. Uh, did Mitchum ever do the stuff after the world? What's, what stuff do you mean? I mean, it was a big advertising campaign for Mitchum. Occasionally, I see, I still see myself come up on TikTok as as a Mitchum advert. So it was definitely part of a big campaign. Have I collected? Have we collectively spent over a grand on Lego yet? Yeah. Way way over, Tofa. Way over. I mean, I'm probably looking at more than that in my office. And like I say, I've spent more on Anna than me. So. It's it's not a problem. It's fine. Will I be getting any Minecraft Lego? I really I was looking at it today. I really really want it. The only problem is similar to what I've done today with the Animal Crossing stuff. If I get it, I'll want it all, and it's expensive, and it will reignite a Minecraft obsession in me. And I don't need multiple obsessions at the same time. But yeah, the Minecraft stuff looks really really cool. But at the moment, I'm kind of focusing on, or I was focusing on the Marvel stuff. Um, so I've got the three big Marvel builds to do: the uh, the Avengers Tower, the um, the Daily Bugle, and the Sanctum Sanctorum. I've got all three of them to build, and hopefully go into the display behind me. I think we're going to retire the wrestling figures and replace it with a little Marvel Lego build back there. But then I've got all the um, got all the Animal Crossing stuff today, and I've still got Barcelona Stadium to make as well, which we're going to be making over on Twitch for the FM crowd. So. I've got, I've got Anna a Disney castle. <laughs> oh, the Infinity Gauntlet. I know. I've got the... Uh, there's a Spider-Man head that I really like the look of as well. Um, this There is just so, so much. So much. Am I still playing Pokemon Go? I haven't actually really played it much this year. I tend not to really play it in the winter. Ever since it came out, it's very much been a summer game for me. Mainly because when I'm out walking at this time of year... I don't really want to get my hands out of my pockets or take my gloves off to play it. So it's, it, I think to play Pokemon Go during the winter, you have to be a full on hardcore, either don't care about getting freezing cold hands or you're basically driving around specifically for the purpose of playing Pokemon Go. And for me, it was never a, it was never that. Pokemon Go was always a thing to encourage me to go out and walk. If I start just driving to poker stops and gyms to do it in the warm, it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, whereas actually I'm now walking and not playing it because I don't want my hands to get cold. <laughs> so I don't know. I'll get, I'll get back into it once it starts to warm up a little bit again. Will we get different Lego landmarks and build a landmark city? Oh my word. Right. Those of you, we talked about this a little on stream last night, but me and Anna are getting are geeking out more and more about it. Um, you know, how for like a year i've been talking about moving my office into the bigger bedroom upstairs that used to be amy's room i think that's going to be a lego room now like a lego city room andy's old room is going to be like the lego build room and anna's streaming rooms anna's going to be streaming lego build Le lego build alongs um and she's going to have like keep her collection of her cool stuff will be in there we're going to set up a whole backdrop of Ikea furniture and we're painting the room tomorrow. We went out and bought some paints and stuff today and we kind of planned out where the furniture is going to go. And we're going to have her like a stream set up in there. And there's going to be a little table on the other side of the room that I can do my bigger builds on. And we can like sit in there and build together, stream together. But then the one that was going to be my office, I think we might be building a Lego city in. 
because we really want to do a Lego City. And uh, that means me staying in here, which isn't the end of the world, because if all my stuff is up there, it's not that much of a problem if I'm in here. When I keep this place tidy, it's it's fine. But yeah, we are we are giddy. We're giddy with it all. Um, you should go to for a cheap holiday to Turkey. I'm going in April. Ten nights, bed and breakfast in the centre of Bodrum, and it was only three hundred pounds. It's so cheap there. I mean, if I could go to Ankara, and uh, and go and see the three teams that I managed over on Twitch, that would be cool. Um, I'm sure, you can get a Captain America shield. I looked at the Captain America shield, and it does look cool. I just think it'd be really boring to make. It's kind of just a big flat circle that's basically just three colours. It, it just feels like it'd be quite boring. Have I visited Spudman yet or do I have any plans to? I don't have any plans to. I mean, I was in Tamworth uh, towards the end of last year as the Spudman hype was taking off. And I didn't feel the need to go and see Spudman then. But I literally wandered around Tamworth Town Centre before vlogging a Tamworth football match. And uh, didn't feel the need to go and queue up for a potato. Sorry, Spudman. I'm sure he's a big fan. But yeah, I don't need don't need to be doing that. Uh, Lego is an expensive hobby, but it does keep its value and increases in some cases. Exactly. I think if we stick with hobbies like that, Pokemon TCG is the same. Um, in fact, to be fair, most of the collectible stuff that I've got is worth more now than when I bought it. So it might seem like I'm just a giant child surrounded by toys, but I keep them in good condition. You only see the, the, the stuff that you see on camera is literally just scratching the surface of the collections. The vast majority of every collection I have is boxed and pristine and in my storage unit um, and increasing in value. I just, the stuff that I get out, I tend it tends to be stuff that I've bought two of so I can have one to keep and one to play with, one to display. Um, so yeah, I think, I think a lot of the stuff that I've collected over the years does keep its value. And I think realistically if we are going whole hog and doing like a lego city and going to spend a lot of money on it in the near future we have talked about how it would be a lot more sensible to maybe sell some pokemon cards to fund it rather than like dipping into real money if we sell like a quarter of the pokemon collection that would get us plenty of money to go out and buy plenty of lego <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think it would be, uh, I think it would be fine. When's the next cruise video coming out? Um, we I think we're in, settled into a routine of Mondays for the weekly videos on this channel. Um, so next episode will be Monday. That'll be the last one where we're actually on the cruise. And then we've got another video coming out the week after, which will be us basically talking about what we've learned about cruising having done our first time cruise because we've now booked the next one so the next cruise is booked still it's still over a year away the countdown on the uh, on the app still showing more than 365 days until we go on the next one so we've got a long wait but that is booked and we have learned a lot so there'll be a whole video about the things we've learned about um about cruising having i'm really really glad we went and did a relatively low cost short one first because we learned so much and i would have hated to have gone on a really expensive longer one not knowing the stuff we now know because i think long term it's going to save us a lot of pain and money knowing what we know now it was definitely a worthwhile investment for sure um i want a nintendo switch today and need some recommendations for non pokemon for a non pokemon player um, do you like Zelda? Zelda? The Zelda games are supposed to be some of the best around. I'm not really a Zelda fan. You can't go wrong with Mario. Um, or the indie games that you can get off the App Store if you haven't played stuff like Stardew Valley, Don't Starve, uh, that kind of thing. There's like lo there's loads of stuff like that that are well worth throwing money at. Celeste. I mean, look at what's in the charts. It's all good. The Switch is one of the best consoles ever made. It's great. Um, just don't buy Lego twice to have a keep <laughs> yeah i haven't bought we haven't bought any sets twice yet um i think the thing with lego having having spent the last couple of weeks obsessively researching it because of the way the sets retire as long as you keep them in relatively good condition like for example i don't know the avengers tower yes it was expensive now but even if i take it out build it keep it on display for five years in five years time that set will be long retired and even as a used, already built set, it will probably be worth more than what I paid for it now. 
So it's a little bit different to Pokemon cards. With Pokemon cards, unless you strike it lucky and get one of the two or three really valuable cards that are in a set, as soon as you do a box break, chances are the value of the cards you got out of the box is lower than you paid for the box. So then you're kind of, you've lost money then. As soon as you open Pokemon cards, nine times out of ten, you've lost money on them. The value is in the is in the hope that you'll get big on it's they're almost like little lottery tickets for kids. Whereas with the Lego stuff, you can take it out, you can enjoy it, you can display it, and then it's probably still gonna be something you can sell on for a profit later down the line because they're so sought after. So it's quite cool. Oh, Topher, the F1 Lego. I'm, you know how I feel about F1. I'm not interested at all. But one of the new releases today was Ayrton Senna's old McLaren. The one that had the Marlborough branding all over it. Um, it didn't have the Marlborough branding on for some reason. It looked a bit bare without all that on it. Um, but I sat in that car as a kid. Ayrton Senna's old Marlborough. Um, old Marlborough, old McLaren. And um, it was awesome. It was awesome just sitting in it. Um, I'd quite like that. I can't be buying a Formula One car. That's mad. That's absolutely mad. Um, right, what else have we got? I'm currently building some of the Star Wars Lego collection. Thankfully, not into Star Wars. So that saves me a few quid with the Lego stuff. Although, saying that, some of the Star Wars sets look incredible and look like it'd be so much fun to make. So even though I'm not necessarily into Star Wars, I'm not ruling out buying Star Wars stuff at some point. In Yu-Gi-Oh cards, can I have the Coastal Defense Edition cards? Like I've never, never tried Yu-Gi-Oh. Would I ever build the Lego Millennium Falcon? Like I say, I mean, I'm not into Star Wars at all. However, as a kid, I had a Millennium Falcon and loved it. It was a really fun toy to play with. Um, and it does look like it would be a lot of fun to build the Millennium Falcon. But the big, like, Ultimate Collector's Edition one is, like, £600. So, I... It would have to be some pretty special circumstances for me to spend £600 on a Lego set for a, an IP that I'm not interested in. So, <laughs> I mean, if we end up with uh, a million subscribers on a Lego channel and uh, we're absolutely rolling in it and this becomes our main thing down the line and we end up loaded and the subscribers want it, then, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to sit in now and say I'd never do it. I can fairly confidently say at the moment, based on current circumstances, it's very unlikely I would ever do it. It's uh, it's mad, but it looks so much fun. So much fun. Um, given how you've always been towards, how anti you've always been towards F1 in the past, the F1 fans won't be happy if you bought Lego F1. I mean, frankly, I don't care what the F1 fans think. The only reason I'm anti F1 now is because it bored me to tears as a kid because my dad would always have it on. So I'm quite up with like 90s f1 um I, I i know who all the main guys like i know senna and prost and mansell and those guys so i'm aware of 90s formula one i just wouldn't be interested in modern day formula one um i just finished building the lego concord oh god have you seen the tiktok we put out today um, they had the Titanic and the Concord in the window of the Lego store and we looked at them and were like, okay. So, I mean, if we were going to spend £600 on a Lego set, it would probably be the Titanic, not the Millennium Falcon because Anna really wants that Titanic. Diagon Alley is very good. Oh, yeah. Now, that Diagon Alley, if we, if we do a Lego City, one of the... I've already got the Sanctum... I've got like, Sanctum Santor, Sanctorum. I've got the Marvel stuff. I'm not a massive Harry Potter guy, but that Diagon Alley will be in that Lego Cities. It looks awesome. I was looking at that today in the top. In the top, in the shop, and it looks really, really cool. Um, I'll confess I was into space Lego as a kid. I was massively into all sorts of Lego as a kid. I was really into Technic Lego for a couple of years as a kid. Like, really into it. Doing the whole making your own remote control car, proper nerdy Technic Lego stuff. <laughs> uh, what new channel would it be? Um... We're looking to do a Lego-based channel, me and Anna. Sitting in the McLaren is amazing. Legally, they can't do the branding. No, I imagine they can't do the branding. <laughs> um, yeah. Build the Titanic in a hot tub stream. Do you reckon it floats? It can't float. 
Can it fly? It won't. Will it fly? There's a video. <laughs> Again, we're perhaps a little bit late to the game. That's the sort of thing you do a week after the Titanic set comes out and get three million views. Does the tight does the six hundred pound Titanic Lego set float and build it and just dunk it in the bath? Doesn't I don't know when that set came out. Doesn't work two years after the event, but that's the kind of thing where if you time it right with that kind of content, you absolutely smash the content, smash it with views, and probably end up paying for the set just off that one video. Um but I don't I actually don't know if it would float. Likewise, does the Concorde fly? You build the Concorde and just throw it out the first floor window. It's a great video. Ruins the set, but it's a great video. <laughs> um Lego would float. Interesting. Video games came along and Lego was forgotten. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was always kind of into all of it. I I was I was like a pro believe it or not based on what you see around me in my office now, I was quite a nerdy kid. So I was really into Lego, Warhammer, uh, video games, Pokemon. <laughs> Bearing in mind, Pokemon came out when I was like 17. Still was really into Pokemon. I was the nerd in the sixth form common room who would be with his Game Boy and his Link cable with the other little dweebs trading Pokemon when we were, when we were full-size teenagers. So uh yeah, we um I I never really lost any of the nerdy stuff. I basically similar to a lot of these nerdy hobbies that I have, I fell out of them because I couldn't afford to do them as an adult, because as you know, um we we had Lucy when I was nineteen and being a teenage parent, young parent, young family, um I spent the entirety of my twenties and the first half of my 30s absolutely skint and couldn't afford to do any of this stuff and then as i've got older and the kids have started getting a little cheaper and i've started earning a little more i've been able to start getting back into the stuff that i was into back then and it's awesome <laughs> it's i feel like i've got 20 years to catch up on with all these hobbies have managed to avoid getting back into warhammer so far though so to be fair, the original Titanic didn't float for long. That is a very good point. Perhaps the video would be just smashing it into an iceberg and seeing if it would actually break or would it continue floating. <laughs> um, I think more adults play with Lego than kids these days. And it's the adults that play. Yeah, I mean, obviously I was there in the middle of a school day today, so it would be all adults in there. But so many of the sets are 18 plus. I mean, obviously there is stuff for kids. I mean, the Animal Crossing stuff is all aged six plus. But all this Marvel stuff is 18 plus. Um, we even got like a few of these bags because they were cheap in the entertainer. So I've got a, I've got a Duplo whale. I bought some Duplo because uh, it was super cheap. I don't think Anna Anna picked that up. I don't think she realizes that was Duplo. Um, but they even do like their own version of pop vinyls, which is a terrible thing for me to now know about because. Anyone who watched my videos back in the garage will know just how many pop vinyls I own and are now in my storage unit. They have, like, numbered Lego versions of them, basically. These Brickheads. This is Brickhead 101. They're numbered. Oh, God. Oh, God. We even got some of the little minifig things. Like, random minifigs. So I think we're going to open some of them up on a stream at some point as well. Do a little stream of us opening those. By the way, did you know they do mini, uh, mini Fugglers now? Found this guy out today as well in his little mini Fuggler pants. In fact, that's a nappy. Little baby Fugglers. Love Fugglers. Fuggler babies. What a thing that is. Uh, right, let's see what's going on in the uh, in the chat. What new channel would it be? Um, Lego. Uh, let's have a look. So we'll have a look, see what's going on. How many of the top 10 theme parks did we manage to get to in our series? Uh, probably six or seven of them. And then kind of decided to move away from that kind of content. Because, I mean, and the reason for that is studying what people were into on the channel, looking at the numbers, the theme park videos were getting far fewer views than just being on a normal holiday. Like we would go to, we went to Skegness and 
the biggest video was just a, just the caravan. The next biggest one was just looking around Skegness. And the one that hardly got any views was Fantasy Island. And when we went down to the New Forest, same thing. The biggest one was just the holiday park we stayed on. Then the Bournemouth one. And then Portons Park was way, way back. So I think we'll, we're focusing less on the theme park stuff. We'll probably, I mean, we're already... We've already got a Disneyland trip booked in. Um, we, As we try every year, we're going to try and get Andy into the CBBS in the Night Garden Hotel at Alton Towers, but we can never find it reasonably priced. We're constantly looking at it, and it's always so expensive. Um, we'll probably do a trip to Legoland as well because we all like going there, but we're probably not going to probably not going to go and do lots of theme parks, especially because. It's a bit weird wandering around theme parks without kids filming them, <laughs> which is what we ended up doing in a couple of those. And it is a bit odd. Um, This is a rabbit hole that's very dangerous financially, I know. I know. This is going to get very expensive. Yes, it is. Really wish you continued the top 10 theme parks. You need to recruit 10,000 people to watch them then. If they suddenly get a surge, then... Uh, then we'll start doing them again. Yeah, we're definitely going to keep doing Disney. We've got Disneyland already booked in for this year. And we still obviously want to get to America at some point. We'd love to do a Disney cruise at some point. I think Disney is a nice little crossover between nerdiness and travel content that works quite well. Um, Why is Topher saying Kevin in capital letters? Um, Legoland will be dangerous now that we're buying Lego. I know. I know. Um, I'm sure an Alton Towers Blackpool video, for example, would perform way better than a Portons or Fantasy Island. Um, yeah, probably. I mean, we will we will go to Alton Towers. Um, we'll probably we probably are going to do a trip to Blackpool. I mean, we are still going to do the UK Seaside stuff this year. We're going to carry on doing that, so we are going to be going to Blackpool, and it would be weird to go to Blackpool and not go to Pleasure Beach. But what we're going to do less of is like focusing doing specific trips specifically for a theme park especially if it's an expensive theme park like i don't think we're going to go to flamingo land for example which i think was on the top 10 list i think we'll give that one a miss don't bother with theme parks i hate roller coasters i don't like roller coasters either but theme parks are still a lot of fun and there's a place in Germany that's called Fantasia Land, which is like a cheaper Disney. There's one in the Netherlands as well, isn't there? Um, Elf, Elf, Elf something, Elfling, Efteling, Efteling, something like that in the Netherlands, which we, that's definitely on our list to go to. We really want to go there. Looks really cool. Um, Right, let's, Efteling, there you go. Several of you confirming it is Efteling. It looks like the, TikTok has slightly less lag on it than YouTube. People are replying to me quicker on TikTok than on YouTube. Unless the people watching on YouTube are just can't be can't be bothered, don't want to. There you go. Yeah, the I've got Ethling coming through on YouTube now. So that was like 30 seconds earlier on TikTok. There must be some kind of delay on the YouTube stream. Interesting. Once you've seen one flamingo, you've seen them all. And I do like a flamingo. Am I going to Comic Con in May? uh probably but not in the same way we have done in the past we made the decision as a group that we're not going to do the big comic-con egx weekends and go down to london for the whole weekend and spend a lot of money they were expensive trips we've done that for over 10 years now that we first started doing those conventions back in 2012 and each time we do it it costs nearly a grand for me and anna to do because you're looking at probably Three, night, three nights in the hotel is about 600 quid because they ramp up the prices at convention time. Then you've got to get there. So it's either expensive trains or parking. Um, and then you've got obviously all the meals while you're there. And then you inevitably spend money while you're there. So every time we did one of them, it was costing us about a grand. So we decided rather than us going and doing that three or four times a year, we'd just go to Disneyland together. So me and Anna weren't planning on going to Disneyland this year. Um, but we uh, we're now going with pab instead so the three of us are going so rather than doing all the conventions together we're just going to go to disneyland together and it's going to be cheaper so we're actually going to save money by going to disneyland which is a sentence nobody in history has ever said before that being said i probably will nip down to comic-con for the day and just probably on the friday 
head in, do a, do a lap, make a video for the new nerdy channel, um, and then just drive home again that day and not actually stay down there, not go with anyone and just go and do it for a day. Um, the only exception to that is going to be conventions where I'm booked as a guest or doing a panel or something like that. Um, so I'm going to be doing Insomnia Easter weekend because I'm a guest at Insomnia Easter weekend. Um, so I'll be there doing that. Um, but unless they book me, don't expect me at EGX. Don't expect me full weekends at Comic-Con. Um, we're saving a little bit of money on that kind of thing to be able to do the Disneyland trip that's coming up in September. And it's going to be awesome. What about my giraffe friends at Chessington? I would like to go and see my giraffe friends again. That would be nice. Who's going to be the responsible adult with both me and Anna getting into this? I mean, we just have to hope that the universe smiles on us with it again. Every time I've taken a ridiculous plunge into content, it's worked out so far. <laughs> like, I went full-time as a football manager YouTuber before I was making any money doing it, and that worked out. And we started doing travel vlogs when nobody wanted to see them. And that's worked out. I mean, the travel channel pretty much pays for all the trips now, um, which is a lovely situation to be in. So we effectively live off the football manager money. The travel channel breaks even and we spend all that money on travel. So ideally, <laughs> the universe smiles on us again. And we end up managing to have a Lego habit that's funded by Lego content. Um, if it doesn't work out that way, then there's no hope for us because there is no responsible adult. I guess one of the kids will have to step up and just take control and tell us to pack it in. Do I still have Huel as some of my meals? Yes, I have Huel for breakfast every day. Uh, sometimes I have it for lunch as well. Uh, my, my stomach is just very delicate after the gallbladder removal. I can't stomach food within like the first four or five hours of waking up, um, but I'm hungry. So it's not like I can just skip breakfast because I wake up and I'm hungry, but then I eat. and It's not pleasant very shortly afterwards. Anyone who's had their gallbladder removed might understand what I'm talking about. Um, but for whatever reason, I can stomach you in the morning. So I realise it's not necessarily the healthiest thing to have. Um, obviously hyper processed um pumped full of chemicals and sweeteners and all that kind of thing but it i can stomach it it gets me a relatively balanced meal in in the morning and keeps me full till lunchtime so not a huel advert but i do use the product i think it's really good so if they want to sponsor me you know where to find me stephen bartlett he probably doesn't he should does he own huel or does he just push it out to everybody constantly i'm not even sure um right where do we get to good that you're doing something together but the spend it i know van life meets brick life <laughs> that would be fun um when you tried the how to do youtube channel that didn't go brilliantly i mean it, you, views wise it did um i just got a cease and desist because someone else already had the name so it was, it was, I mean, still, I think Topher would have to confirm, but I think the high, the most popular video on Lelujo 2 is still a tutorial from the Content Academy days. Um, <laughs> so it did, it went fine. I just couldn't use the name because um, I got a cease and desist on it. So, um, yeah, that was, that wasn't, that the content wasn't working out. Generally, I think after doing this, I mean, I've been a content creator now for nearly 10 years just on YouTube. Before that, I did six years as a podcaster. So and before that, I did. Blo so basically, if you count blogging and podcasting and everything, I've been a content creator of sorts for nearly 20 years now. Um, doing it for a living for nearly eight years. I think I have a good feel at this point for what might work and what might not work. It's one of the reasons I'm pushing TikTok as hard as I am at the moment, because TikTok, I think, I think is going to become a big platform for, for us. It seems to be going quite well. Will you go to Gamescom or is that a you and Anna? If it, um, we're thinking about going to Gamescom in Germany in August. We haven't, we haven't figured it out yet. Uh, how much money does podcasting make me? 
uh, less than YouTube and less than streaming. Not very, not not a lot. But that's mainly because I mean, if you listen to our podcast, we don't really have adverts on it, so we we don't make money very often because we don't really push it out. Um, if we decided to really push it, we could probably have adverts on there every week. We just don't really feel the need to. But it's something we could monetize fairly quickly if we had to. Um, there you go. Topher confirming. Most popular by far is an OBS tutorial. There you go. What did I do before? What before I was a YouTuber? I was a teacher briefly. I was a teacher for four years. Uh, before that, I was a, at uni for four years. And way, way before that, I was a financial advisor for a long time. Um, but that was a completely different life now. It's unimaginable now, that life compared to this life. When I I stopped being a financial advisor when the financial crisis happened back in 2008. And shortly afterwards, I also got divorced. So there's a very distinct split in my adult life which is kind of like everything that happened pre 2009 ish and then everything that's happened after 2009 ish and it is like two different lives it's 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 quite difficult now to believe that pre 2009 me was even me it's almost like I like I've got loads of photos and videos and stuff from back then and it's almost like I'm like peering in on somebody else's life it doesn't feel real anymore because it's so different to life now so um yeah it's it's a strange one um what makes more youtube or twitch for me youtube by miles how much does tiktok make me is this do you reckon this is the same guy who was in the twitch stream last night who's trying to audition to become my accountant um tiktok doesn't make me very much at the moment i've only been monetized on tiktok for about two weeks so um at the moment it's not making very much at all but i'm slowly but surely figuring out the kind of content that works on tiktok so like i had a uh, i had a big a bigish video on the football manager channel last last week week before um we've done quite well on there the last couple of days as well and then on this tiktok channel we had an absolute banger this morning um the lego store video is uh is doing really really well um so yeah i'm slowly but surely figuring out how tiktok works we should make a video on it what on how tiktok works where would i upload such a thing <laughs> am i in the beta fund on the lelujo channel yes on this channel no um i'm also verified on that one but not on this one so this one still has a little bit of work to do i don't really understand i applied for verification on both at the same time and I don't really understand why they verified one and not the other with the same evidence. Especially when they verified the one that's not my human name. So, like, the evidence I sent them was stuff from the world record and all the media coverage I got from that, which rarely mentions Lelujo, but mentions Kevin Chapman a lot. Yet they decided to verify the other one. It's it's very confusing. What do I tell people my job title is? YouTuber, usually. I mean, I don't often have to tell people my job title. It doesn't come up very often um any idea of the numbers expected to turn up at the east five game no idea at all hopefully loads of people i dislike how tiktok notifies me of a new video then links me to an old one ah uh, the tiktok algorithm is an incredible thing do i like kevin the minion still yes anything with kevin on i am all for um what world record um i broke the world record for longest uh, longest gaming marathon playing a sports game last year at Insomnia. So you can't actually see it from this camera angle, but I've got a nice little Guinness World Record certificate up on the wall there. Um, right, I'm just noticing the time. Um, we're recording the podcast in about 15 minutes, so we can maybe do another three or four minutes, and then I need to uh, then I need to say goodbye and get myself ready for the podcast because that needs recording. So that'll be out tomorrow morning. So we'll do a couple more questions from each platform um would i ever do longest marathon full stop no because it's my my, rec my world record is about 50 hours for a sports game the world record 
the longest gaming marathon world record full stop is something like 12 days and bizarrely they did it on dance dance revolution i can't even fathom it assuming they had the same rules as me which is a was it a five minute break no it was a 10 minute break every hour i was allowed so i was allowed a 10 minute break every hour i cannot imagine doing 12 days almost constantly on it was either dance dance revolution or just dance or something ridiculous 12 days straight <laughs> um, how did i feel after doing the record broken and very tired <laughs> And of course, came straight off it and had to do loads of media. Um, so broke the world record and then had to do a TV interview, a radio interview, a few newspaper interviews. Um, the ITV piece they did on me is on the internet somewhere. And it was recorded an hour after I finished the record. The adrenaline has left my body and I'm, j I'm just broken. I can't even form words. It's uh, They should have just done all the media the next day. Um, any plans for more Pokemon pack openings? Um, never say never. If we're doing a nerdy collecting channel, maybe. At the moment, I'm definitely more into Lego than Pokemon. I'm still buying the po the new Pokemon sets as they come out. I haven't opened a pack of Pokemon cards other than my advent calendar for probably six months. So I've got a lot that's still sealed that. I will maybe get around to opening at some point or I may just hold and sell as boxed product at some point. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it all. Um, but I am still buying a lot of Pokemon, just not really doing anything with it. Just similar to what we were saying about Lego at the start of the stream. This, this collectible stuff, as long as the bottom doesn't fall out of the collectibles market in general, all this stuff that I collect just consistently increases in value. So it's a case of buy it, and then decide what to do with it later. Either enjoy it for myself or sell it on if it massively increases in value. Would I ever bring back the weekly vlog? No. The closest thing you get to that now is TikTok. Um, this TikTok is the vloggiest thing I've done in five years. And I'm enjoying it in small and little doses. But what I, what I enjoy about it most is there's no pressure to release every day or a certain amount of times a day or a video of a certain length i can release a 15 second video and that'd be that for that day's content but then i can have a day like today where i've probably released 10 minutes worth of content the content i've put on tiktok today could have very easily been one big youtube video um but it was I, I just like the flexibility of it so that's the closest you'll get um right think we are about up to date i've got a name for the channel together we click as it's both of you and it's lego well, that's not bad that might go on the short list hmm. with content academy could i have not just changed the name of the channel and carried on um i mean i could have done but i'd spent a lot of money on branding of it um so like all of the logos and all of that kind of stuff and i couldn't really come up with a name that was just as good and it kind of just took the shine off it for me so i just decided not to um right folks we are going to wrap it up there i think because um i need to do a podcast so thank you for joining me again i think assuming i've jumped through the hoops correctly i should now be able to go live on tiktok whenever i want so we won't necessarily be making these fridays and every friday thing that being said I might well do them when I'm at home. Like I say, I'm here next week, but then I've got a couple of Fridays where I'll be away anyway. But it does mean I can just go live on TikTok whenever. Um, so what you might find is when I am traveling over the next few weeks, there might be lives included in that as well. And sometimes it will be dual streamed here to YouTube as well. And sometimes, sometimes not. But um, live streaming in general is something I want to make more of this kind of content. So keep an eye on both platforms but for now thank you very much for watching um i'm going to say goodbye i'll say goodbye to youtube first so bye bye youtube um new video out monday so make sure you're here for that and if you haven't seen the most recent one yet go watch that and if you haven't yet followed me on tiktok at mr kevin chapman you should we're having a lot of fun over there but toodle pip youtube that's uh that's youtube so 